From the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all time, transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs. Tarzan, the bronzed white son of the jungle. And now in the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of City of Sleep. The mingled scent of animals and of man was strong. Tarzan's body tensed as he peered down from the topmost branch of a gargantuan kapok tree. Then he relaxed. For the animals, a pack of giant African warthogs, although the most hideous of the jungle creatures, seldom attacked. And the man who broke through the clearing was Captain Lawrence, who was well able to take care of himself. But was he? He seemed like one in a trance, and the animals had suddenly realized his helplessness. They swarmed on him, their ponderous bodies knocking him to the ground, their hooked tusks tearing at his flesh. Tarzan grasped the vine and swung himself down into the melee. His life flashed and darted and stabbed as though he were a dozen men. Is that Tarzan? <laughs> the one standing up is Tarzan. Those on the ground are dead warthogs. Where, where did they come from? Where did they come from? Uh, Another moment and they would have shredded your body as they have your uniform. Uh, it is torn, isn't it? Captain Lawrence, what's wrong with you? What's what's happened to uh, you? Nothing. Nothing. What brings you to El Hadi, Tarzan? To El Hadi? But we are hundreds of miles from there. We are? But then, how did I get here? Th this would be funny were it not so tragic. If you've wandered hundreds of miles through the uh, jungle without even realizing it, you must have missed death by inches a dozen times. I, I think I did shoot some animals once or twice. I, I'm not sure. Captain Lawrence, it tears at my heart to see my closest friend in such a condition. H have you been drinking or have you injured your head or... What in the oh, name of... I'm perfectly all right. I feel fine. I... Oh. Perfectly fine, huh? And then he faints dead away. Well, he suffers from a strange malady that's beyond me, but... But perhaps I know someone who can save his life. And his reason... Tarzan, why you bring man village of snake people? But I've told you how he acted. I, I knew that only the people of your tribe could possibly have medicines to cure him. Have put salve on wounds. I wasn't worried about the injuries from the wild hogs. They're little more than scratches. But look how he lies there, like, like a man in a coma. Nadio is like man in another world, not know what to do. But you must. It's it said that you know more than do the doctors of the white men. Uh, it's false story, not know. You're, you're keeping something from me. I can tell by the way you look at Captain Lawrence that you... that you've already diagnosed his ailment. He your friend, Tarzan, no? Of course, I told you that. Me not tell Tarzan what friend has done. What he's done? What are you getting at? In the name of heaven, will you tell me? Your friend enjoy fruit of poppy. Narcotics? Captain Lawrence? Put... <laughs> That's ridiculous. He's a captain of the governmental police. Why, well, he's fought the use of narcotics for years. You ask, I tell. Is plain from glaze of eye, twitch of mouth. Is not mistake. Oh. What, what, what can we do to bring him out of this, this spell? Snake men have dawa that fight what you call narcotic. We give when natives use King Yola. You have a medicine to fight King Odi, narcotic of the jungle people? Nadio, his strong tawa. Then, then use it. Use it quickly. Maybe you not like what it do. I like it if it helps Captain Lawrence. All right, I use. Mokino, Dabinok, Zuaba. Help with white man. Why, why do you need three men to help you? They hold him. All right, men, you hold tight. Well, not the one to yeah. Now, me cut small slit in arm. No, 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 no. Yes? Mix liquid. Go ahead, hurry, hurry. Now, pour in strong tower. There. 
It doesn't seem to have any effect. Wait. No. No, I won't take it. Let me go. Let me go. I'm not spying. It's all a lie. Let me go. Don't kill me. I'm needed. I... He must go Come. through this, Tarzan. Let me go. Come with me. You've made a raving maniac out of him. Soon he exhausted, then he sleeps. Sleep. Yes, that, that, that's what he needs. And when he wake up, I think he has strange story to tell. In just a moment, we shall return to the exciting story of City of Sleep. Tarzan's nails dug deeply into the palms of his hands as he watched Captain Lawrence struggle. Hours passed, and the natives continued to hold the captain in a vice of steel as his delirium mounted. His body was bathed in sweat now. His eyes were red-rimmed and glassy, and his body heaved with convulsive spasms. But at last, the fever induced by the strange medicine subsided, and with a deep sigh of exhaustion, he fell back in a soft bed of furs. For three days and three nights, he slept the sleep of the dead. And then at last he awoke on the morning of the fourth day and smiled weakly up at the Lord of the Jungle. Hello there. Tarzan? How do you feel? Weak. A little bewildered. I'm not sure how I got here. I think maybe I have an idea. Perhaps you're too weak to discuss the matters that fill your mind? No. No, I want to talk about them. The last thing I really remember is deciding that I had to have your help in a vital matter. Then I blacked out, mentally. Yes, it must have been sheer instinct that guided me to you. I will call it instinct for lack of a better name. Go on. You see, I... I'd become deeply engrossed in the problems of the city of sleep. El Khadi? Exactly. It's always been called that because it has long been the... Center of Africa's narcotics trade. Yes, I've seen the dens of troubled sleep there. One cannot escape them in El Khadi. They existed for centuries despite everything the authorities have been able to do. Only in recent months it has taken on a new complexion. In what way? Before, the narcotics agents merely dispensed their evil to those who became addicts of their own will. But recently there's been a concerted effort to recruit those who might ordinarily have resisted such temptation. Minor government officials, soldiers, native servants, women, school children. And those who deal in narcotics have been out looking for new customers, huh? They become dissatisfied with the way their enormous profits from the comparatively few oh, no, come no, in. No, it's deeper than that. They're out to make an addict of every person in the city. As though that weren't bad enough, they've begun to dispense adulterated drugs that destroy the cell tissues of the brain. But why? I think the answer lies in the growing signs of war. Del Hardy is strategically located. And a population crippled and dulled by these opiates could be taken without the firing of a single gun. I see. And you were assigned to investigate the matter, huh? I took it upon myself to look in on a certain Monsieur Jean Dupre, who had suddenly become very rich. He was most affable and begged me to remain as his guest. Yes? I accepted so that I could remain in his fantastically elaborate mansion long enough to find out a few things. And you decided to try some of Dupre's opiates? In order to test the effects firsthand? Yes. I decided to try some. As a result of the gentle persuasion of a dozen men who entered my room at Dupre's and held me down while they jammed a hypodermic needle into my arm. <laughs> That's the last I remember. Until a few moments ago. You say you took it upon yourself to make this investigation. Is there no governmental agency in Akhadi? Well, yes. Who's in charge? Sir Archibald Chambers, colonial administrator for the province... He warned me to stay away from Dupre, but he was doing nothing to combat the situation. Well, as soon as you've gained your strength, we'll leave for El Hadi together. We'll visit Monsieur Jean Dupre, and we shall also call on this colonial administrator who closes his eyes to the greatest threat the continent has ever known. (laughs) 
A few days later, Tarzan and Captain Lawrence left the village of the Snake People and began their long journey to the City of Sleep. And indeed, it proved to be a city of sleep. Opium-laden Arabs lolled in shadowed doorways. Once proud English colonists stared vacantly from the cobweb windows of dingy hovels. Jungle savages who had come to the city as huge, muscular men lay in filthy gutters, their bodies wasted and diseased. Tarzan and Captain Lawrence averted their eyes as they passed these human derelicts, but their eyes were sharp and their faces angry as they faced Sir Archibald Chambers, colonial administrator for the province in the library of his home. I am disgusted with the sights I've seen here, Sir Archibald. Yes, El Khadi does not present an attractive picture these days. Well, that's putting it mildly, Sir Archibald. You ought to be ashamed to occupy your office. I'd remember my position, Captain Lawrence. I'm remembering mine. Captain Lawrence is well aware that he's braving court-martial, but neither of us will accept evasive answers concerning what's happened here, what's still happening. Yeah, now, gentlemen, let's not lose our tempers. Had I meant to avoid answers, I would not have invited you in. Oh, sit down. Have a cigar. I do not smoke, and in any event, a piece of twisted tobacco is not apt to solve our problem. Yes, quite true. I wish it were as easy as that. Sir Archibald, what's being done to investigate this Monsieur Jean Dupre Captain Lawrence has told me about? Nothing. And I want Dupre left strictly alone. Why? Because I said so. And despite Captain Lawrence's insubordination and your impertinence, I'm still the highest governmental official in the province. I see. Your, your job is an important one, Sir Archibald, and yet I've heard that the salary is small. The colonial service has never been known for high salaries. What is that to do with the problem? I have also heard that the narcotics trade is well known for high profits. If you're insinuating that I'm accepting graft for protecting narcotic dealers, you're barking up a very wrong tree. I despise those who prey on the people. I detest narcotics. And I hate what's happening here. Broken bodies, disrupted homes, misery and the sickness and the despair that's fallen upon us. But I can do nothing. Why? What possible reason can you have? That, gentlemen, is a personal matter. They will not endure your prying into it. That's Dupre's mansion ahead? Yes. Well, I hope we accomplish more with him than we did with Sir Archibald Chambers. I can't figure him out. Sir Archibald's been a little strange ever since his wife died. There's nothing but cluck like a mother hen over an only daughter. Won't let her budge from his side. A daughter? Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Charming girl by the name of Deborah. Should be about 21 or 2 by now, I'd figure. What makes you doubt her existence? Well, his house. There were no signs of a woman. She might have been out. A woman's presence is always felt. There are cigarette stubs that bear the marks of lipstick, silk scarves or gloves carelessly abandoned somewhere. Knitting bags that rest in some corner. A and the flowers in the garden were untended. Well, maybe we'd better stop discussing the frailties of women and think about the villainy of men. The main entrance to the mansion is just around the corner of this wall. It's a gaunt-looking place. Easy now. I don't think it would be wise to announce our presence. I quite agree. Keep your eyes open. Mm -hmm. Open the gate quietly. Watch out, Captain. That hound's got jaws like a panther. I'll kill. Down, boy. Ah, good boy, good boy. Why, it is Monsieur Le Capitaine. Yes, it's Captain Lawrence. Ah, you have brought a friend this time. A very, very nice. <laughs> In just a moment, we shall return with the exciting conclusion of City of Sleep. I have been most worried for you, mon capitaine. You've been worrying about Captain Lawrence? Oh, but of course. He is my guest. Thieves come in the night. They force their way into my bedchamber. Then they dog me. When I have made the recovery... I find the thieves have made off with much money and jewels. And I discover that my guest is missing. Yeah, I'm greatly concerned. I see. So, I'm most happy to see you again, cher ami. I am very sorry that you were robbed. 
As a member of the governmental police, I should hang my head in shame for having permitted this to happen when I was in your household. <laughs> uh, I know of the excellent watchdog to guard my property, eh? Yes, sir. Uh, a powerful dog. <laughs> and Jean Dupre is not a man with an unforgiving nature. You are invited to be my guest again now, mon capitaine. Uh, you and this handsome friend who is with you. He is an amazing specimen of manhood. And I am anxious to know about him. You may learn a great deal about me, Monsieur Dupre. We uh, accept your kind offer of hospitality. And uh, this... <laughs> this is my uh, recreation room, gentlemen. You have ever used the foils, Captain Lawrence? Our training included a few lessons in epée, yes. Ah, uh, the epée is not so difficult as the foil or the saber. Are you a swordsman, Monsieur Tarzan? No, no, I've never dueled. Ah, uh, great pity. With your jungle life, you must have developed your reactions to the point of perfection. You would make an excellent duelist. No, I think not. Ah, mais oui, you should try the foils. These have buttons on the end. They are incapable of inflicting a wound. Here, examine one of the blades. Catch! Oh, that's a silly thing to do, throw a foil at a man who's not looking at you. <laughs> but he caught it. I was testing his reactions. They are sensational. Uh, come, Tarzan. Let me show you a few fundamentals. Well, thank you, just the same, uh, but... I... The point d'arrêt at the end is blunt. You need not be afraid. I am not afraid. Good. So long as you are not afraid, we can amuse ourselves. On guard! We stand in line. So... Now we salute each other by raising our weapons and bringing them down smartly, like this. Like this? Ah, excellent, excellent. Now begins the contest. All right. The right foot forward, about one and a half lengths. Good. Now, knees bent, body erect. La pointe arrêt, straight at me. Like this? Ah, stand more the profile to me, eh? It offers the smallest target that way. Ah, good. Knees bent, remember? Even distribution of the weight on the legs. Bend the right arm, left arm bent for balance. You must make ready to parry my blows. Now! All right, I think I'm beginning to catch on. You parry well. Now is my attack. I try to touch where is your heart. I, I advance. I think. Ah, good. You have deflected my blade. Now begins the false attack. I glide, forcing aside your weapon. I faint again. I thrust. I, I make the touche. <laughs> it is a fine sport, Monsieur Dupre. Your, your body moves like that of Sheeta the Panther. Uh, I made the quick movement. It is known as the coup de Jarnac. At the academy, I was the finest dueling student of Monsieur Lucien Godin himself. The most illustrious instructor of our century. A very proficient in dueling, as well as in other things, Monsieur Dupre. <laughs> But if you'll pardon Tarzan and me, we shall wait until tomorrow for further demonstrations. We've had a long journey. We should like to retire. Uh, but of course. I will put the equipment away. Then I shall personally escort you to your chamber. Thank you. Uh, I'm often carried away by the spirit of the duel. Did you see my coup? Were these real dueling rapiers with needle-sharp points? The floor of my little recreation room... Would now be red with your blood, jungle man. He almost had me fooled for a while. Yes. He plays the role of a French sportsman to perfection. But he gives himself away when he has a sword in his hand. His eyes gleam like a madman. But of course, that hardly constitutes proof that he's responsible for the narcotics trade of the city. That he plans to throw off our government and deliver El Cadi into the hands of some foreign power. Ah, uh, uh, I thought so. Hmm? What is it? Shh, shh. Take off your shirt. What? Do as I say. All right. What are you doing with your knife? Making a hook for you to hang your shirt on. What? There's a peephole in the wall there. Monsieur Dupre is anxious to be able to find out when we're sleeping soundly. That does it. He won't know what we're doing now. But if he thinks we're waiting for him here... He won't think that, but we will be. Captain Lawrence, you'll take up a post by the door. I'll crouch by the window. There's a balcony outside of it. Mm -hmm. But first, we have work to do. Work? A few sound effects in case someone's listening. Walk over to the bed with me. Hmm. All right. Now, to pretend we're going to bed. Better sit on. Right. Oh, oh I'm 
certainly tired. I think I'll be asleep before my head touches the pillow. Oh, me too. I can't keep my eyes open. Uh, night, Tarzan. Can you snore? <laughs> I guess so. Well, start it now and keep it up as you take your position. I'll do the same. Right, but don't overdo it. To them. You all right, Captain? Oh, yes. Help me tear up the bed sheets. Then we'll tie them up and gag them. All right. Yeah. Dupre's and among them. A man like Dupre always lets others do the rough work. I suppose so. Unless I miss my guess, he's sleeping peacefully in anticipation of what he's planned for us tomorrow. His tomorrow's going to be a lot different than he's anticipating. That's what we have work to do tonight. When we've got his unconscious friends here tied up, we'll uh, do a little exploring of Monsieur Dupre's mansion. <laughs> secret plans, a supply of narcotics. And we've searched every room of the house, except for Dupre's bedchamber. The recreation room. Hmm? We haven't searched that. Did it strike you as though there was something strange about the way he said recreation room? Of course. That's it. Come on, it's right down the hall here. I think maybe we've struck on something. Well, it's not much to go on, the way a man says a word. Oh, this is it. Oh. We'll find out soon. Well, you take this row of cupboards. I'll look through his desk here. Shall we risk a light? We ought to be able to see well enough by the moonlight coming through the windows. Nothing suspicious looking here. Books on the art of swordsmanship. Dueling pistols. Medals. Tarzan. Fencing. Tarzan, I've got it. Look. A whole chart of his organization. Mm, he's that kingpin, all right. A table showing the percentage of the population already in his power. And here is pains for... Look, look, look at this. A dollar and cents agreement for the betrayal of a people. With this evidence, Sir Archibald will have to take action. We haven't found a place secret cache of drugs yet. And but... you will not find it. Okay. Stand back, Tarzan. This blade does not have a point array. That was a savage blow with which you fell, Captain Lawrence, from behind. He's fortunate I did not run him through. I am saving the clean steel of my blade for you. My knife is upstairs. Uh, holding a shirt. <laughs> but you do me too little honor. I am a sportsman. You shall have a chance with a blade the equal of mine. Catch! On guard! We stand in line. So, now we salute each other by raising our weapons and bringing them down smartly. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Now begins the contest. And this time the prize is life. You are an experienced swordsman. Until this evening, I never held a rapier in my hand. But I think that perhaps... Uh, you are greatly improved, Monsieur Tassan. Uh, but now for the coup de genre. Uh, I parry. I glide. Uh, I faint. And then I... Just... Ah! Ah! Tassan. Tassan, are you all right? Yes. And you? Oh, a little dizzy, but... What, what was that? Somebody's back of that wall. Looks like a secret panel. Yeah, yes. There's a button that, that must... Yeah. A girl. Why, it's Deborah Chambers. Yes, Captain Lawrence. Please let my father know that I'm... To pray. He's dead. Yes, the finest fencing student of the academy killed by a jungle savage. It was lucky. And I have been a prisoner here for months, kept in that dark secret room... Locked in with enough narcotics to stupefy a nation. You were his prisoner. So that's why Sir Archibald would do nothing. Dupre boasted that he had told my father he'd kill me if any move was made against him. I'd rather have been killed than have the people of Africa fall prey to that monster. Oh, your father cannot be blamed. His whole life is wrapped up in you, Deborah. I realize that. Father came here as an adult. I was born here. He loves me best, and, and I love Africa best. I understand. 
as only one who was also born on the dark continent can understand. I think Dupre's death and the discovery of his plans and his narcotic supply may do much to bring light to the dark continent. With people who love her as does Deborah Chambers, Africa can never be blotted out by famine or war or deadly narcotics. In just a moment, a preview of our next exciting story of Tarzan. Oddsmull Queen was a well-known gambler, a familiar character at the racetracks of Saratoga, Suffolk Downs, and Pimlico. He had won and lost fortunes at the gaming tables at Monte Carlo and in Havana. And he was well aware that crime and violence are gambling's constant companions... But Odds Queen was unprepared for a game where life was the stake, and he found it difficult to determine the strange jungle odds. Tarzan, a transcribed creation of the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs, is produced by Walter White, Jr., prepared for radio by Bud Lesser, with original music by Albert Glasser. This is a Commodore production. Commodore production.